welcome back. Uh, in this lecture 21, I will discuss about ring opening polymerization and also discuss few aspects of copolymerization or copolymers. Now, basically there are two main topics I will try to cover. One is uh, ring opening polymerization and chain copolymerization and these are the sub topics which I plan to cover. Now, generally we have seen that if we have a polymers with uh, say backbone, heteroatomic backbone like say uh, polyester, uh, polycarbonate or some, some other uh, we polyamides. So, like Z and where Z is basically heteroatom. In that case, we have seen that this uh, polymerization are generally synthesized by uh, step growth polymerization that we have discussed in details. But this can be also there is another method by which we can mm, basically synthesize this uh, polymers with backbone containing heteroatom and we call that polymerization method is ROP or ring opening ring opening polymerization. Opening. So, in, in ring opening polymerization basically one cyclic monomer is ring opened to make polymers and some of the example this is uh, if we go back ok. For example, this is the monomer structure is a cycloalkene and this reopen to make a polyalkene polymers. If we have a monomer like this, this can on reopening it can form a polyether type polymers. We can have another cyclic ethers which can be reopened and to form polyethers. This is a cyclic lactone which can be ring open and polymerize to form polyester. There are other examples like lactam polymerizing cyclic lactam we get polyamides, cyclic siloxins we get polysiloxins and some other like uh, phosphazine type phosphazine type um, monomers substituted phosphazine we can actually get polyphosphazine and for ari from arigidine type monomers on ring opening we can prepare polyamine type polymers. So, the generally this is a general way to represent so you have a cyclic uh, monomer on ring opening you can get a linear polymers and cyclic monomers such as we examine cyclic ethers, ester, amides, carbonates, siloxanes which undergo ring opening polymerization. Now, cyclic monomers should be able to polymerize provided there is a suitable mechanism by which we can actually initiate and make the polymerization kinetically feasible. So, we should have some monomers which we can actually ring open by either ionic or radical way. And more importantly this opening of ring and polymerizing has to be thermodynamically feasible. Now, we know that this ring structure is strained especially if the ring size is very low and very large. So, obviously, if we ring open a small size ring or a large size ring then there is a possibility that this ring strain is released and we get we, this becomes thermodynamically feasible. For example, if we talk about polymerization of cycloalkanes, which when we have a ring size of 3 or 4, then the ring strain is quite high and as a result the ring opening polymerization energy per mole is very high. This is exothermic as the ring strain actually released. 
So heat is heat comes out as a result this is exothermic and which is thermodynamically favorable. And when you have little larger size molecule like 7 member ring or 8 member ring then also there is a ring associated ring state ring strain associated with that and as a result it is also thermodynamically feasible. But when the ring size is uh, 5, 6, 7 then the tendency of reopening actually uh, becomes uh, lesser and lesser especially for 6 membered ring it is it's normally is difficult to polymerize by ring opening polymerization. So, basically most important factor which determines whether a cyclic monomer can be converted to a linear polymer is a thermodynamic factor that is the relative stability of relativities of the ring and linear structure as we just described. So, most reactive monomers are those containing 3 and 4 membered ring because the ring strains are much higher in those cases. And for cyclic ethers, the tendency of polymerization for according to the ring size is 3, 4, then 8, 7, 5, 6. 6 is the have the least tendency to polymerize by ring opening because the ring strain is minimum for 6 member ring. Thermodynamic, but of course, thermodynamic, thermodynamic feasibility does not always guarantee realization in practice because there has to be a kinetic pathway for the ring to open which facilitates the polymerization. Now, the small changes in physical condition and chemical structure actually can have a large effect in polymerizability of cyclic monomer. For example, THF and polybutyrolactone they are all 5 membered ring, but this can be recommended cationically which cannot be done for this monomer. Similarly, if we, there are differences in the ring open ability for 6 membered cyclic ethers and cy versus cyclic esters or THF versus 2 methyl tetrahydrofuran. So, little bit of substituent actually make lot of difference in their ability to form linear polymer by ring opening. And sealing temperature are often quite low. We remember sealing temperature which basically takes care of the reversible nature of the polymerization and sealing temperature is where the rate of forward reaction or the rate of polymerization is same as rate of depolymerization. So, in case of ring opening polymerization is actually the sealing temperature is quite low compared to vinyl polymerization particularly for 5 member and 6 member ring and that is the reason this is uh, it, the, the feasibility of 5, 6 member ring for undergoing ring opening polymerization are quite less. Now, ring opening polymerization the mechanism and kinetics uh, the initiation is uh, basically this does not result in the loss of small molecule or loss of unsaturation. This ring opening polymerization is initiated by same type of ionic initiators including coordinate, coordinate ionic that example I gave for uh, in 1, 3 butadiene case as in the case of ionic polymerization of carbon carbon double bond. So, the type of initiators which you we has explained during ionic polymerization, ionic chain polymerization like cationic initiators and anionic initiators, so they can be used for ring opening polymerization as well. And some cases molecular species like water can be also used as the initiator for ring opening polymerization. And because the initiation are done mainly ionic species. So, the polymerization actually exhibit most of the characteristics of cationic and anionic polymerization of vinyling monomers including the effect of solvent and counter ion. And as you can guess or you can um, understand that this is ring open once ring open then the next poly next monomer actually comes and attack the active center 
and the polymerization goes on by adding addition of one monomer at a time. So, it is a chain polymerization not step polymerization. And in many cases because it is talking about the ionic initiation many cases these are leaving polymers and as I said that polymerization depolymerization equilibrium is very important in ring opening polymerization. And this is important that though it is a chain polymerization, but the propagation rate constant or the polymerization rates are actually similar to rate constants of step polymerizations, not same as chain polymerizations. So, they are actually several orders of magnitude lower than normal chain polymerization. As a result, molecular weight increases slowly which depends on the conversion and monomer to initiator ratio. Now, this is the example of uh, cationic polymer ring opening polymerization and in case of cationic polymerization uh, strong the initiator actually initiator can be strong, strong protonic acids like trifluoroacetic acid or fluorosulfuric acid sulfonic acid triflic acid so, these are these strong acids which can be used for as an initiator for cationic ring opening polymerization. And there are actually two mechanisms possible. One case the, the counter ion actually remains as with the cationic which is uh, cation which is a part of ring. And for the second monomer attacks with the acti active center and the polymerization progress like this where the active center is the cyclic monomer as such with the counter ion and the activating species. There is a second similar but second type of mechanism possible where instead of this ring being remain as ring structure it actually opens up and the second monomer attacks here in the active center and the polymers linear chain polymerization actually gets synthesized. Similarly, in case of anionic polymerization, this uh, second type of mechanism is the most uh, likelihood and in this case the initiators are generally used uh, like the way uh, or the examples we gave during the anionic polymerization like metal hydroxides or metal alkoxides, alkyl metals, alkyl metals or like sodium naphthalene. The type of initiators which we discussed uh, during the anionic polymerization, those are uh, similar type of initiator can be used for anionic ring opening polymerization as well. And basically, this is the similar mechanism as we discussed for the cationic uh, polymerization, where the the monomer actually ring open, and there is active center at the end of this chain and which basically attacks the another monomer and which 
which basically become part of the growing chain and at this way the polymerization takes place. And at the end of this uh, polymerization we have this uh, anion present or earlier case cationic present. So, that is why there is a possibility of these chains being leaving unless we deliberately quench or terminate the chain using a, a basically quencher. And as a result because of leaving nature generally the size of the ring opening polymer, polymers actually determined by the initiator to monomer ratio or monomer by initiator ratio. So, higher the lower is the ratio of monomer and initiator the higher is the molecular weight produced by this ring opening polymerization. So, but there is not uh, not many many commercial polymers are produced by ring opening polymers. So, that is why we will keep our discussion um, on this uh, polymerization uh, quite brief in brief and we will move to our next topic of chain copolymerization. So, as we discussed during our introductory lectures that when we polymerize two monomers simultaneously they form copolymers which can have different arrangement they can have a random arrangement they can have alternate arrangement they can have blocky arrangement or we can have even graft type copolymers and these are from the commercial polymers with a random structure and alternating structure and so on i'll give you a and for homopolymers we have limited options but for copolymers we have unlimited options so basically the number of homopolymers are given by number of monomers which we can polymerize. But in case of copolymer we can actually change the ratio of the monomers, we can have different microstructures. So, basically the possibilities of synthesizing copolymers are endless unlimited. So, basically that is in our hand that we as our wish we can actually change the composition or microstructure to generate new copolymers. We will give a specific example of uh, commercial copolymer which is important. For example, if we talk about polystyrene, polystyrene PS for example. Now, PS is uh, brittle in nature and have poor solvent and chemical resistant. So, if we add acryl nitrile and make a copolymer of say polystyrene co acryl nitrile, then we can increase the chemical resistant because of presence of this acrylonitrile segment in the copolymers. But this will not solve the brittleness of polystyrene. So, for that what is done? A graft copolymer is synthesized, graft copolymer where a polybutadiene core is first synthesized which have this double bond of butylene and on top of this double bond we can actually generate this polystyrene polyacrylonitrile copolymer. So, as a result we have a polybutadiene core, polybutadiene core and we have this polystyrene acrylonitrile copolymers are grafted on the core. So, basically we have acrylonitrile 
butadiene styrene or a commercial name is ABS acrylonitrile butadiene styrene copolymer. Now, because of the presence of this polybutadiene core, which are rubbery material, and this actually improves the brittleness of this original polystyrene quite significantly. So, this becomes a quite uh, useful copolymers example. So, we will just give you the example in, in uh, chemistry term. So, basically as we said that we first uh, polymerize butadiene to make polybutadiene core and on which we basically he use a copolymer of styrene and acrylonitrile to make polystyrene acrylonitrile graft. So, this is the example of graft copolymerization and graft copolymers actually have a linear main chain polymers with this side chains graft which are grafted onto the main polymer chain and this type of graft copolymers which is the ABS as example we just gave could be synthesized two ways one is grafting through. So, basically we have two monomers one of the monomers have this long chain polymeric segment. So, on polymerization we can have the backbone resulting from this carbon carbon down bond with hanging this uh, polymer chain. So, here we are talking about grafting through. There is another possibility where we can actually polymerize first and one monomer have these functional groups and now we can actually generate or use these for further polymerization to make these polymers or we can have a polymers with the functional groups we can couple with this functional group to basically synthesized graft copolymer. So, basically there are two techniques one is grafting form and another is grafting through or grafting to, to make graft copolymers. Step growth copolymers are not uh, very important in this commercial aspect because not many uh, step growth copolymers are used the examples are few, but there are there are some example, but it is not as popular as uh, chain growth copolymers. And this step growth copolymerization can be obtained by using monomers with different structure. And uh, for effective copolymerization, the reactivity of the monomers must be similar to general and as and generally uh, step growth copolymerization. Uh, basically produce random copolymers. Now, ideally if I have say one polymer uh, with uh, say COH backbone and another with uh, OH backbone, these are polymers. So, ideally we can basically use this and couple this to make block copolymer. So, this one block is this another block is this, but in reality what happens because this has this this has a functional groups in the backbone like say if we have a talking about polyesters this have polyester backbone this is also have polyester backbone. Now, what happen in actual scenario? this N group can actually react with this polyester backbone and undergo exchange reaction. As a result with time this may be initial first few polymers are block synthesized as block copolymer, but with time because of this exchange reactions the ultimate polymers tend to become more of a random copolymer. So, just making block copolymer using step copolymers are, are actually difficult and even if we can make, but later on during polymerization and you know, processing steps this might undergo this exchange reaction or trans reaction and actually generate 
random structure. So, block copolymers can ideally be synthesized by reacting to uh, pre polymers as like the example we have shown here with different molecular weight and we can actually have the required stoichiometry by using one of the pre polymer in excess the, the one which we would like to have in group we will use that as the excess. But in reality as I explained that it is difficult to achieve this block copolymer because many linkages in step growth polymers undergo exchange reaction or trans reaction which results in randomization of structures. So, we will move to more important chain copolymerization. Okay, before that some example of strep growth copolymerization. This is an example of commercially available copolyester. This is the alcohol groups and this is the two acid chlorides which are used to make these copolymers. So, there are few example of commercial step growth copolymerization. Now, we will move to more important commercial from a commercial aspect the chain growth polymerization, chain growth copolymerization and if we just for example, when you start synthesizing copolymer chain growth copolymerization say let us we have a two monomer M1 and M2 and at the beginning we have a say 50 50. So, we have a 50 50 mixture in terms of number of moles 50 50 mole fraction in the beginning. Now, if the reactivity of M1 is greater than M2, what happens initially the copolymer will have more M1 getting into the copolymer backbone which means the F1 if we write F1 which is the mole fraction of M1 in the copolymer which would be so F1 would be greater than F2 which is the mole fraction of M2 in the copolymer if the reactivity of M1 is greater than M2. So, as a result there could be a difference in composition during the polymerization. So, maybe beginning when there equal mole fraction 50 50 the resulting polymers will have more of M1, but later on as more M1 get consumed the reaction mixture will have more M2. So, the later polymers will have more M2 in the polymer structure. So, that is possible. So, basically we can have differences in the monomer concentration in the copolymer compared to feed. So, if I F1 may not be equals to F1, F1 being the mole fraction. in the feed composition in the feed. So, if we talk about 50 50 F1 will be 0.5. So, that is one possibility and second that possibility that there could be a composition composition of copolymers produced at different time during the polymerization may be different. So, we, we talk about this as composition drift. In, in chain copolymerization we will still have the normal three step initiation, propagation and termination. So, in this case if we write that 
we have two R star. Now R star can react with uh, M1 to produce R M1 star and or it can react with M2 to produce R M2 star. Now, once these produce, these are produced, now R M star can react with further M1 producing R M1 M M1 star or it can react with M2 to produce R M1 M2 star. Now, this can again further react with either M1 or M2 or this can also further react with M1 or M2. Similarly, R M2 star can react with M1 or M2. So, now we, we generally will represent at the if the end has M1 star then this is what actually decides the reactivity. So, we represent the chain like this and if the end has M2 star then we will represent the chain as M2 star. So, this is usual propagating steps. The only difference than normal chain homopolymerization that each active center has chances to react with two monomers instead of one single monomer in case of homopolymers. As a result, the chances of producing different structure, microstructure within the copolymer co that, that are produced which we will discuss. And termination can be done by uh, either M1 reacting with M1 either by disproportionation or by coupling, M1 reacting with M2 or M2 reacting with M2. These are the usual possibilities. So, in case of homo homopolymer, we have only one possibilities between two propagating chains having same active center and they can get terminated either by disproportion or, or coupling, but in this case there are three possibilities, three combination which are possible. So, this is, uh, so as I explained that the main difference is a propagation step where the each propagating chain with the active center at the end now in case of copolymerization has possibility to reacting with two monomers rather than one single monomer in case of homopolymerization. So, we will move to the kinetics part of uh, chain copolymerization and as we know that the rate of chain polymerization depends mainly on rate of propagation because during the propagation only most of the monomers or almost majority exclusively all the monomers almost uh, are consumed during propagation step. So, propagation rate of propagation will be uh, equivalent to rate of polymerization. So, with this what I will do, I will stop here and in next lecture I will uh, um, talk briefly about this uh, chain copolymerization.